Good morning. The Friends and Families of Holy Trinity Catholic Parish, thank you for joining us today for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass can be viewed via live stream on the parish's Facebook page and heard each Sunday on KVFD 1400 at 8.30 a.m. Welcome to this celebration of the Mass of the Solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. The opening hymn will be hymn number 570, To Jesus Christ our Sovereign King, hymn number 570. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things, and your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty's service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give rest to them, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Prepared a table before me in 
goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for a length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd. There is no A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. 
I was thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, ill and you cared for me, in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, from me you are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. But these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. So this is the last um, Sunday of the liturgical year before we start our Advent season. And so all these readings we've had over the last several weeks have pointed towards the end times, looking at what's going to happen. And for many of us, this can be a source of a little bit of anxiety, especially when we hear a reading about this. It seems pretty intimidating, right? Jesus saying he will separate the sheep from the goats, and that is we hear the scripture that hopefully, in a good sense, puts us in this reflective type of mindset where we say, am I the sheep or am I the goat? And probably throughout our life, this switches off and on. But the question is, is what will we be at the end of our lives? Will we persevere in faith? Or will there be a moment or moments that we tend to drop off in our faith? And so again, this presents, because we don't have control over this situation, we do in a sense, but a lot of this is just to be determined, right? So when we look at the future, and when we look at the end of the story, oftentimes, you know, when we watch a movie, and there's all this drama that's going on, and this up and down, this journey of this particular plot, and it produces within us a little bit of questions, right? It produces within us a little bit of uncertainty, and sometimes a little bit of worry or anxiety about how the story is going to end up. It's a likewise for our story. We feel a lack of control in the midst of situations where we want to control things. And so I don't think it's any coincidence today, as we celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King, that this feast was only established about 100 years ago, 98 years ago. And it was established in a time when people felt a little bit out of control. That's because we had the rise of, in the world, many dictatorships, such as in Mexico, in Italy, and in Germany. So, for instance, after the First World War, the German people, after experiencing such a defeat, were looking for someone to fix their issues because things were out of control for them. They didn't know what to do. The country was in a mess. And of course, we have someone called Hitler who rises to power because he appeals to the people in their time of need and appeals to them because they want someone that's going to save them, right? And so oftentimes when we feel out of control, when things are not going the way that we planned, we look for someone who will fix things Sometimes that's us. Sometimes we try to grasp onto control, and we can see this from our daily lives, right? In our family, there's such thing as called codependence, when someone is messing up or doing something they shouldn't be doing, and sometimes we feel like it's our job to fix them, to step into the position of control. But we find that the more that we do this, the more that we find out, oh, I can't control that person. And likewise, it is sometimes with a society where people either try to grasp onto control or they completely surrender it to someone who promises to fix all of their problems. And it's likewise even in American politics. This is nothing foreign to us. Over the last you know, centuries and decades, we have leaders that have promised to fix all of the United States' problems. And we're tricked because every time we put all of our faith into that person, we realize that they're not really the answer. 
And so it's no coincidence that the church establishes this feast in the midst of such um, turmoil in the world, in the midst of such dictatorships, to say, look, the people on earth, these people that have promised to fix every problem, well, sometimes they do fix some problems, they're not our king. The person who is our king is Jesus Christ alone. And how often are we willing to place all of our needs and all of our control and surrender everything to Jesus Christ? Because we think it's easier somehow to fix it. We think that we can control God. But brothers and sisters, we cannot control God. He's just going to do what he does. And so we sense that there's a lot more freedom and peace if we just say, you know what? I can do what I can do, but in the end, Jesus, you can do it. I surrender all my worries and concerns. And perhaps this year as we approach this end of the calendar year as well has been a difficult year for you. Maybe it's been a recent diagnosis that you've faced or someone in your life has faced. Perhaps you're having difficulties in your marriage or in other relationships, friendships and other relationships. Maybe this year has been difficult in terms of money and finding resources to keep things in place. Maybe you just deal with continued uncertainties in your life and continued um, kind of insecurities. Maybe you're worried about your popularity or your status or your image in the community or in a particular family. Maybe at school your grades aren't what, they, what you wish that they would be. Or maybe even at work you're concerned about your job performance or your relationship with your boss or other people. In the moral realm, maybe you're just concerned about your continual sinfulness and state of brokenness. And while sometimes some concern is okay about these things, I think we have to learn when to just surrender the concern. When we can discern the fact that these things are ultimately beyond my control and I can just give these over to Christ. And so while today we celebrate this fact that we externally want Jesus to be our king, really what this feast is about is allowing Jesus to reign in our hearts, to be able to give to him what it is that we need to give. And brothers and sisters, that is ultimately everything. Everything that we have belongs to Christ. So today as we approach this altar and as we receive him in his body and blood, as we receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ himself, let us not put it past him to heal, to bind us up, to be able to provide the protection that we need, so that one day when we encounter him, we can say, look, I wasn't concerned about trying to fix others or fix myself. I relied on you. That when I saw the person that was a stranger, I wasn't afraid of them. I was willing to give up control about what that threat meant. I was able to see that person in front of me and say, I love you. Not as simply, you know, a human being, but as Jesus Christ himself. One time when I was working, um, I used to get really anxious when I was a meteorologist uh, before I would go on air. Understandably so, right? You're going in front of hundreds of thousands of people. And I remember in the midst of this anxiety, something that popped in my head one day, I don't know how it kind of came to be, but I was really struggling with, I think, my insecurities and looking at that person or imagining what that person was thinking on the other side of the camera. I would oftentimes think that they were criticizing me or trying to find a fault in the way that I was presenting the weather. And so one day it dawned on me, why don't I just give the weather, not to that person, but why don't I just allow this forecast to be for Jesus himself? To imagine that person across in their living room or wherever they were watching this broadcast to say, you know what, I'm going to deliver this to Jesus. I'm going to give this forecast to Christ. And maybe that's what our lives should be like. That when we encounter the other person, when we're afraid and we can't give up our control to Christ because we're afraid of that person in front of us, what they're going to think, that they're going to focus on our insecurities. Maybe what we can do instead is say, this is Jesus. And when we start to do that, when we start to encounter the other person as if they are Christ, then we find that our relationship with others completely transforms. Today, let us allow Jesus to be the king of our hearts, to be the king of our universe, so that when we meet him one day, we'll be ready to answer yes, to say, I did what you asked me to do because I was free from fear. I gave up control to you.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of Let us bring our needs to God, our generous and true King. For all members of the church, may Christ our King reign always in our hearts and in every word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders throughout the world, may God's abundant and unceasing love be their guide in serving those they represent. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer in any way, may the peace of Christ beyond all understanding bring them healing and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. For all gathered here today, may the Holy Spirit sanctify us in our lives of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, Kyle Baker, Bar Bonnie Barnett, Thomas Ryle, may they soon rest in the arms of the Good Shepherd and for the intention of this Mass, Father Dennis Minan, Pat Hillman, James Bradley, the Condon and Griffin families, Lee Johnson, Anderlinda, Martin, and Georgie Espinoza. Let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers we hold silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we, we beg, beg you for, for an increase in religious vocations. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your Spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts a desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious as we entrust to your care all who seek to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn of preparation will be hymn number 589, O Radiant Christ Incarnate Word, hymn number 589. Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as the eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty as an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, to get there with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, you blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, able to just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angels to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, lights, and peace. To us also, your servants who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are in the Lord's name. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now for the teaching and terms of my life. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Hymn number 953.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, the glory and obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in this heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn will be hymn number 569, Jesus Shall Reign, hymn number 569. We will be singing verses 1 and 5.
Descend with songs of